Yeah, the rib on the inside looks cool. Uh, have a good day. Bill Gates. Or <laughs> <Definitely, laughs> <definitely Bill> <laughs> All right, so today we're gonna to do some stuff of degenerate nature. I thought I'd bring Trey along. I'm going to smoke cigars, answer questions, and go get kegs for my pump. So I figured I'd bring you along because most of the time we're training, eating perfect, talking about goals, and doing all this shit that everybody's like, fucking you still talking about that again? Which works. But like Arnold said, it's good to have a little dysfunction of all the discipline. IG slash YouTube. I'm not gonna be reading the questions because I'm watching the road, but Trey, who you can't see off camera, who's running the camera, not the camera, will read the questions to me. So if you guys have, uh, we're doing a little, little lunchtime cigar Q&A in the cruiser. So if you guys have any questions, yes, degenerate questions, Trey won't read them. That's legitimate questions. You will read them, and then I'll answer. Why I smoke cigar and back. Oh, that's a great one. Thoughts on CrossFit? So a lot of people were really going to be degenerates here, baking in the car with the windows up. The um, thing about CrossFit, which is awesome, I'll start with that, is we had I think some things that were lost in the gym community. Because if you notice, you go to your local big gym, everybody's got their headphones on. There's next to no camaraderie, and a lot of people think they're working out hard and they're really not. That's part of the reason why I have a job, because I have a good service for people that wanna actually change their body, and I know how to do that. What CrossFit did was bring back a grimy aspect to gym membership and camaraderie and competition. See, that's the one thing a lot of people miss. A lot of times when people leave high school sports, they don't ever compete in anything again. I've been fortunate, like I've been competing in some since I was 17 because I do powerlifting and bodybuilding and all this, but that's not common. So even as much as them hitting that clock and you're competing um, for that workout, there's an aspect of that that I think feeds the soul and it's good for people to push. And so I like CrossFit. Now some of the downsides of it is, you know, you got some people that probably have no business doing certain lifts that are. There's, there's that downfall, but honestly, their instruction is unbelievable. Um, I have my CF level one. I got it at Reebok when I was sponsored by them. James Hobart, Austin Maliello taught it. Unbelievable, and I learned a ton. And um, so I got no problems with it. I think it's great. It's great for the industry. People that hate on it just don't know how difficult it is, and I think just I have a very open mind. Now, do I love it? No. Do I like it? Sure. What cigar am I smoking? So, this is a... Uh, local Charleston company, hand rolled cigar. I don't even know what it's called. It's just this little mom and pop shop down off of King Street that I walked into. It's a medium body uh, cigar, real good, super fresh, even though the outside layer is kind of peeling off. Um, but normally, um, my favorite cigar is the uh, Espada from Monte Cristo. Amazing cigar. Um, I do like the Javas, like the. Uh, for like a smoke sometimes, but the, the a spot of Monte Cristo is my favorite, unless it's like some Cubans for sure. The watch, if I ever want to be a watch collector, I think, first off, it's a fucking expensive ass hobby. I, I've, I've always wanted, since I was younger, I've always had, a, you know, an affection towards the presidential, like I think just because it, it had like an executive feel to it, but also you saw Pac wearing it, a lot of the rappers, so a lot of people that I looked up to, whether they were actors, they were um, businessmen, or rappers, all wore presidentials. So that was really, uh, which is the Day-Date um, 40 meter from, from Rolex, that was the one that I always had my eye on. I was never interested in anything else. Um, and so I waited till I was able to purchase that. Since then, I've definitely, um, I, I really like the, the Deep Sea Dweller from Rolex too. That's probably, um, cause I, I wear, I only have a gold watch at this point. Um, I, I would like to have a silver one too. But um, yeah, I think that over time, my whole plan was to pass down 
community. He's like, you know, I'm all about the legacy stuff and um, that next generation stuff. So my thing is, is I want to make sure that my boys and my daughter um, have some type of heirloom slash watch of, you know, that me and my wife wore that we can pass down to them that has some type of value um, and sentimental value. So, so that that'll be the extent of my watch collecting, I believe. I'm about there. So I'm gonna ask what's the best workout plan to prep for a meet? The most, the best one to prep for the meet is always the newest to get stacked. Here, here's what I love about the way that we program. I was more sore from Wednesday's workout this week than I was from the powerlifting meet I did over the weekend. The way that we train, lunging 400, 800 meters a day, squatting five times a week, rotating 200, 300, 400 pounds of band tension, different variations, four front squats to one back squat, we can compete at the drop of a hat. That's not just me. I'm not just some weird alien that can do this and not, you know, and be able to recover. It's across the board at now an elite level. We have multiple guys that have hit elite numbers and multiple guys that are right at elite numbers. When you have multiple guys squatting 500, 550, 600, pulling 500, 550, 600, never taking drugs before, that are continuing to prove the system. And with me being 40, Todd Dunk will be in 50, it's still moving numbers like that. It's kind of hard to dispute it when it's not just like one or two people, when it's like 15 fucking deep at this point. So. That I believe it's just following the get stacked progress. We're gonna always work new things into it. And you could go to a meet literally by following the taper that I put on the website. Do I ever think I'll bulk again at 220? Ooh. I don't know, I'm so happy, straight up. Once I figured out anabolic fasting, it's so easy to maintain literally the heaviest and leanest I've ever been in my career that it's, it would be hard for me to go back up like that. But here, here's what I'll tell you. I will go back up like that because I still have an idea where I would like to go elite in like four or five weight classes of powerlifting, drug free. So I still, I would go back up to 220 if I needed to um, attain another, uh, you know, weight class that I would do it. Actually, I would go to 221 so I could actually qualify for 242s. So maybe. Not anytime soon though. I got men's health. I want to do a physique show or a bodybuilding show. I got some other stuff. I want to go elite and gear, meaning powerlifting gear at 181. I got some other things at lighter weights I need to grab first. I got some big goals at 19. The damn wrap fell off the cigar and now it's burning in the fucking This cigar tastes really good, but it looks terrible. Someone asked if they should jump on the current guest act or just start my DNA. Oh yeah, so what's crazy about a lot of people that don't aren't aware of what happens at Corey G Fitness, there is currently 47 get stack programs the day you log on. So if you're a beginner, yeah, you can jump in one through five, kind of get moving, understand it, or even jump into the 20s. We got a lot um, better with the videos and the voiceovers and all that kind of stuff as it got progressed. Um, we, we drop them every four weeks. A lot of people that already are used to lifting, then absolutely jump in the most current because here's what's fun. It's fun to see what we're posting and what the guys are posting from old school and then you're doing it alongside everybody so you can see the kind of numbers to the body weights that we're moving and then also just have like a camaraderie as you go down into the new one because look like I said most gyms don't have no camaraderie no more we do have that at Corey G Fitness across the world like I just had a guy this morning from Mexico um, he wrote it in Spanish and then he wrote it in English about how how much success he's having and get stacked 47 how he owns a supplement store down there and he hopes he can carry max effort one day and he just loves the workouts and we have tons of people in Ireland and the UK, India. It's just, it's so fun for all of us to have um, goals like this and to kind of feed off each other on the website, on social media. It's really cool. What's the cheat meal? So part of the other degeneracy that's happening currently, besides the cigar smoking, is I got two kegs of beer in the back. I got Guinness, of course, and Sam Adams Summer Ale. So uh, I've been working on my 
little miniature Irish pub in my basement, me and the wifey, and I'm um, getting ready. I put all new lines and everything in the, in the um, kegs. So I'm getting ready to go home and hook them up and drink some beer. And the cheat meal, I'm not so sure, but it's definitely gonna be something coming off the meat. I haven't drank beer in a while and, uh, you know, had an okay meat, but as a group, we fucking murdered it. And so we're gonna celebrate that a little bit. And Guida's fighting BJ Penn this weekend. So I guarantee at some point there's gonna be some beer drinking to that and some, some cheat meal action, but hopefully tacos and wings is usually my go-to. And ice cream, of course. All right, so we better go before we get pulled over because this looks like there's a lot going on, even though I'm being a very safe driver. I'll see you guys later. Peace. So I'm pretty sure Bill Gates is in the car beside me, I'm gonna ask. Sweet, dude. What's up, Bill? Sick. What year? I just got a 2013.